Becoming a blockchain developer is one of the fastest ways to change your career and earn a six-figure salary. It's one of the highest paying fields in tech. It's super remote friendly. And also you get to work on really exciting technology building the future of the internet. But sadly, a lot of people who go down this path don't actually make that goal. And this video, I wanna talk about some of the top reasons that people fail to become blockchain developers and how you can avoid these things so that you can achieve that goal, okay? I'm gonna talk about this as a blockchain developer myself who is self-taught and helped a lot of other people uh, break into this space. I've watched some people succeed. I've watched some people not make it. I'm going to help you in this video. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. On this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about some of these top reasons that people fail to become blockchain developers and what you can do to avoid these and how to you know, actually become successful. So number one reason that people never make this goal is never starting in the first place, okay? So if you're watching this video, you've been on the fence, you know, just been thinking about going into this industry and becoming a developer, and you just haven't done it for whatever reason, well, the answer is to stop watching this video or maybe just watch it till it's over and then get started. You know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and you've got to take that first step if you're ever going to get there. Now, there's lots of reasons why people fail to ever get started in the first place. You know, there's this uh, friction because it's maybe uncomfortable or it's hard or maybe you've kind of started a little bit, but you haven't continued to follow up and take action. But you have to think about the reward that awaits for you at the end of that journey. Like, so what if you actually could get to that spot where you had a remote friendly job where you're earning a good salary, working on something that's actually fulfilling compared to whatever you're doing now, okay? So think about the pain of what you're doing now and then the benefit that awaits you at the end of going through these hard things. And think about, you know, six months to a year down the road. Would you rather be doing the exact same thing now? Would you rather be in that place? And so you've got one or two choices. You can either choose the pain of discipline to getting there or the pain of regret and staying in the exact same situation that you're in now. So that type of cost benefit analysis can kind of help you get unstuck and start taking action if you're worried about it being uncomfortable or hard. Now, another reason people procrastinate is out of indecision or, you know, and they don't know what to do. So sometimes the best thing is just to take action and just get started, okay? Maybe you're not too scared of doing something hard. Or you're scared of doing something wrong. So I wouldn't worry about doing everything perfectly. Just take action and start moving towards the goal. And you can use that momentum to help you, you know, build that progress and then find the most efficient path forward. All right, one of the next reasons that people fail to become blockchain developers is that they learn the wrong way. Okay, so before I said that taking action is, is big, but ultimately, you want to try to make the journey as short as possible, okay? And you have to prioritize efficiency for doing this. So a lot of people have the wrong priorities when they're trying to figure out how to program. And here's some of the common things that they do wrong. You know, one is they try to go study uh, programming languages by themselves, just like in isolation without building projects. Or they try to study computer science fundamentals first or data structures and algorithms. <laughs> oh my gosh. Before they actually learn to practically write software, even really simple software. This is completely backwards, Okay. So the right way is that you prioritize learning by doing. So basically learning the programming languages in the context of building something, that's the only way that you're actually going to retain the information because that's when you see uh, why you're using it in the first place. What's the most common things you hear about kids in school? They ask their teacher, when am I ever going to use this? Well, if you're learning programming languages by doing, you're never going to be asking that question. And so that's how you get the fundamentals of the programming languages, okay? Uh, but then ultimately, you want to go on and build your own projects. You want to think about a problem that you have to solve. Because at the end of the day, you have to become a problem solver, become a developer, not just learn to type the right characters in your keyboard to write the coding languages. And so when you have that purpose in mind, a use case, and you're building towards that, that's when you're going to bump into walls. You're going to get error messages you don't understand, have to reach out to other people, get on Stack Overflow. But that's ultimately what all developers do when they're in their regular job anyway. So if you learn that skill now, you're going to be on that path of self-learning that everybody else is at some point in their career, and you'll get good at it now, and you'll continue that throughout your skill set. So once you've done these things, and only then after you've done these things, can you go back and study the fundamentals of the programming languages, study data structures and algorithms, computer science fundamentals, because then you're going to have context to understand those things, but don't do them first. All right, so reason number three why people fail to become Web 3.0 developers is they jump technologies too often, okay? So I see this a couple different ways. So sometimes when people are beginning to code, they just want to go sample a bunch of different programming languages until they find the one that like fits or they just feel like they need to be a generalist in a bunch of different programming languages, kind of dappling this and that. So that's actually terrible. OK, it's horribly inefficient and you're probably never going to get good enough at even a single one of those programming languages to become an effective professional developer. So what you really need to do is pick a tech stack 
that has, you know, a, a real use case, real purpose, real demand in the marketplace, and then go for the throat and get really good at that stuff and ignore everything else. And honestly, if, it, if it's a couple programming languages in there, you want to get the best at one of those and then have be good enough at the secondary one so that you have some sort of specialty that you can offer, uh, you know, to an employer. So here's my recommendation, all right? If you don't know what those coding languages are, that's one of the reasons people dabble around. They don't know what the best ones to choose is. So if you're trying to become a blockchain developer and you're just trying from scratch, maybe you're coming in from a different programming background, my recommendation that I teach on this channel is to become a good Solidity developer with having a secundary programming language of JavaScript. Now, I know there's other programming languages like Python, all right, that you can use for this type of thing. Uh, if you already have a good reason to use Python instead of JavaScript, that's fine. Maybe you're a Python developer already. But if you're not either of those things or you're already a JavaScript developer, I highly recommend doing Solidity for smart contract development because it's super in demand and then JavaScript because you get more mileage out of that. You can build user interfaces. You can do a lot of other stuff in the general development community uh, with that programming language. All right. So another way that people fail in regards to this same topic of switching programming language and tech stacks too often is not the beginning of their journey, but once they've gotten into their journey, okay, they might have been working on a, you know, different text. They've been working on a tech stack and then they just jump ship to go learn something else because someone asks them to. So I was actually just talking to somebody the other day, a student who, you know, had been getting pretty good at Solidity, you know, had some good JavaScript skills and they had started working on a project. And then they were like, hey, well, you know, we changed, uh, you know, our goals here and we want you to learn Rust, to like build this project in Rust. And I was like, bro, you need to switch jobs before you switch tech stacks in this case because you're kind of at that point where you just need to get that next level up before you can become a really valuable developer okay and you're going to totally hamstring all that progress if you switch tech stacks right now so like there's there's plenty of demand for your skill sets just keep going you're going to get a much higher roi on continuing those skill sets than like switching you know your tech stack just for this particular employer and i see the same type of thing all the time and that's my recommendation is continue to specialize in the thing that you're good at that's going to give you the highest ROI in terms of, you know, your long-term career success. All right. So another reason people fail to become Web 3.0 developers is they give up too soon or they don't put in enough time and effort to actually reach the bar that they need to be to become a professional developer. OK, so if you think about becoming a developer, like what I'm going to call the minimally viable developer, I will actually clarify what that is in a minute. But like you got to be just good enough to get your foot in the door and start providing value in the workplace. So when you're on that journey, it's sort of like going off of a bike jump, okay? So you're riding a bicycle and you're going down this hill and there's a jump at the bottom and you have to get across like a, a big gap, like a river, for example, right? The last thing you want to do is like slow down on that thing and then just like fall off and then you don't actually make the gap. So you have to like put in, you know, enough effort to achieve skate, escape velocity to make it over to the other side. I realize that's that's a different term there, but you get the idea. And so most people actually vastly underestimate the amount of time and effort that's required to get those minimum vital skills. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but what I'm saying is a lot of people get into there and think they've been spending all this time when really they spent like a week learning something or really just a few hours, okay? So one solution to this is to keep a timesheet. This is something I personally did when I was becoming a developer and learning on my own, okay, it's what I recommend to lots of other people when they're going down this road, because it's a sanity check to say, oh, this is how much time I've actually been spending on this, because you can feel like you've been spending, you know, years doing something, but maybe you actually spent a couple weeks total time, and that's not really enough to become a professional developer. So only really probably till you spent like hundreds of hours on this type of thing, if you're starting from scratch, should you feel like you have, you know, actually put in a good amount of effort. Now, on the flip side, uh, there'll be lots of people who are, you know, crippled with imposter syndrome, who are too afraid to like actually make the jump of starting to apply for jobs and get in the marketplace and, and become a professional developer. So in, in some cases, the bar is actually lower than you think. So some people, some for some people, it's higher, some people, it's lower. Now, that's, that's horribly confusing. But how can you actually uh, determine that for yourself? Well, guess what? The market's ultimately going to decide whether or not you're ready to become a professional blockchain developer. So here's what you do. So whenever you have, um, you know, gone through learned the programming languages by creating something with guidance and then gone off and created at least one project on your own, okay, uh, that you would consider like professional level, put it out there in a blockchain, put it into a website, into a portfolio. That's when you're ready to start applying. Now, I'm not saying you're instantly going to get a job, right, when you do that, but the market's going to tell you whether you're ready or not. And you can take that feedback and then go work on the things that, you know, you feel like are deficient or that the market tells you you're deficient in. That's going to be way more valuable than just like sitting in your, you know, bedroom, office, whatever, just saying, you know, being too scared to even try. And again, people focus on the wrong things. They feel like they need to go 
study data structures and algorithms and all this stuff in order to get a job and solve like whiteboard coding challenges. Here's the thing. If you're just starting from scratch and you're just trying to get a developer job as a blockchain developer, that stuff is way, way overkill. And this is a very controversial opinion that I realize a lot of people are going to disagree with in this video. But honestly, like that stuff's important if you are trying to become like a top notch, like senior developer at a fang company. OK, and like really that that's when that stuff becomes important. If you're like a junior level developer just trying to get your foot in the door, there's lots of people going to hire you based on your actual skill set that you bring to the table that don't really care whether you understand data structures and algorithms, because honestly, that's super not important for your first job. Uh, I was a uh, professional software developer making well into six figures before that even began to matter. And honestly, it still never really mattered that much. You could theoretically go your entire career by just digging a ditch and throwing all that stuff in there and never touching it. All right, so one of the last reasons people fail to become web 3 pointer developers, blockchain developers, is that they lack consistency in their journey, okay? So you, you need consistency in order to get to the minimum viable skill set that's required to become a professional developer. Which what I mean by consistency is just putting in practice uh, frequently within short time intervals uh, to where you can actually start making steady progress towards that. Now, I want to nuance that a little bit because some people love to just binge, right, and go all in, all right, and then work in these big bursts. And some people like to just sit down for short, you know, periods of time every single day. It, it, like, it doesn't matter necessarily. It's just as long as you make the goal. But you have to have consistency either way. So let me uh, say what I mean by that. So like, even if you're a binger, like you can't binge on like a weekend and then wait a month and then do that again and expect to retain the information that you you had the month before. Like that's way too much time in between. So a good rule of thumb is absolute bare minimum needs to be three days per week if you're a binger, okay? If you're like good at just sitting down and doing things consistently, I mean, the best is every single day, all right? I mean, even if you're a binger, I would still recommend like looking at it every single day, if you can. I realize it's not realistic, life happens, but you want to maintain at least three days per week on your journey until you achieve escape velocity and become a professional developer. And another good reason to keep a timesheet is this will help keep you on track and honest with consistency. And it'll help you realize that, oh shoot, like two weeks went by and I didn't do anything. You're really going to feel it in that case. And a timesheet uh, will help you keep accountable on that. You can even have somebody else check your timesheet uh, if you don't trust yourself to hold yourself accountable. All right, so those are some of the top reasons that people fail to become blockchain developers, okay? So I don't know if you've been making any of these mistakes. Hopefully you found some of this information useful in this video as a helpful tool to get you into action and to pursue that goal because there's a huge pot of gold waiting at the end of that rainbow. Again, blockchain is one of the highest paying fields in tech. It's very remote friendly. It's super exciting technology. You get to build the future of the internet. So if that's, that sounds good to you, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel. You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses. They're totally free. They teach you exactly like the style I was talking about in this video. And if you like those videos, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut and just go for the throat. I actually become a blockchain master, step-by-step -step start to finish. Land your first six-figure job over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And the next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.